Welcome to part two of this particular painting, one of the biggest ones I've done for a long time, about two feet square. You might hear some extra noise in the background. It's construction season on the busy road I live on, and there's a baby cat playing with all sorts of things. My apartment is trashed. He surfs on the floor that's very slippery to him. So, in this part two, this is the dramatic portion where I cover the majority of that big pink underpainting. And this particular image, if you had questions at all, that's the teacher inside of me of answering these rhetorical questions that we ask. It can get long-winded. This particular image is nowhere, nowhere that I know of. It was out of my head. I would love to do an abstract of somewhere more particular, and I've done that before, but this one... I was inspired by a lot of different artists who had done these square field paintings. And there's a lot of change that will go through that I'm learning. It's not quite like a copycat. I did come up with the majority of it myself, but when it's this simple, you're gonna see a lot of compositions just like it. And I'm playing with the values and the colors, and I go back and forth a little bit, but I always want to have that pink underpainting poke through. I'm also experimenting with a bit more of a palette cam because my studio assistant likes to watch me mix paint. You might see that other tiny little video. He hasn't gotten paint on his paws quite yet. You can probably hear him rattle his little mouse right now. Anyhow. So you can see my palette off the corner right there. I use a plastic plate to hold most of my paint because the acrylics will peel right off of it. I get it at the dollar store. So much cheaper than a regular peelable palette that you can get for like $9 at an art store. And it comes with a lid, so two plates for a book that I can flip right on top and it stays all wet. What you can't see entirely in this shot is my gray glass palette. So I don't have an, a lot of room mixing on that little plate, especially for a large painting like this. And the gray glass palette is a 50% gray, which helps me judge color. My plastic palette's tending to get a little stained, but it still holds the paint wonderfully. And I've got my spray bottle right there to spray the paint and my palette. And when I'm outside, I'll tend to paint, spray the painting itself. And when you have a baby cat that gets into things, long distance spray gun of a water water spray bottle is also handy when he shouldn't be getting into some things. So that's my, my secret weapon is my spray bottle for my paint and myself on the outside. That's my palettes. Um, would setting up a palette cam help you? Do you want to see me mix paint or do a video on mixing paint? Please let me know. I work mostly in Liquitex Heavy Body. I love the thickness of it and Pretty decent pigmentation for what you've got compared to the price of Goldens, which really aren't that much more, seriously. But at the same time, yes. And I also love the thickness of it. And with a lot of these coats, I'll be putting more acrylic gel in them. It's like adding more oil to the paint and adding more body to it, so it adds transparency. And you can use this to your advantage if you understand which pigments are transparent and which ones are opaque. Because if you mix the gel with an opaque pigment, a matte opaque pigment, the gel is going to give it body, but it's not going to give your color any depth. You can still work with it, but it won't work for glazing. And that will actually lighten the color, so when you mix an opaque and transparent color together, you're never going to get as deep of a color if, as if your pigments were both really transparent. And if you wonder how to tell if a pigment is transparent or not for that purpose, it often says right on the tube, if you've got artist quality or a student grade and above, it will say on the tube. If you're working with the two ounce bottles of acrylic paint, those are specifically for covering and for crafts. You're not going to learn how traditional pigments mix. They might cover great, you might like them, that's fine, work with them, but you will not be able to get the same glazing techniques unless you have a transparent pigment. And that comes naturally from some of the, the chemistry of the pigments themselves. So the siennas and umbers are, they're iron oxide basically, which they're rust, and they are a natural pigment. 
and it has its own qualities to it. And the good artist pigments are also just natural for themselves. And you get chemistry and all that kind of fun stuff. I don't know the chemistry of what makes it transparent as compared to opaque, probably the size of the particles, and I'd love to know more about that. Anyhow, glazing. I might actually do an instructional video. I can't talk. Instructional video on how to use opaque versus transparent pigments and things like that because I love to layer and give depth and depth and depth. So in between some of these videos I actually have put a few layers of gel on it. I, it's, it's kind of an isolation coat. That's usually a term used for something that you varnish. And in my case I'm trying to get some depth between the colors. The gel I'm using right now is Blickrylic. It's a student grade Dick Blick acrylic gel. Half gallon. I'm almost done with a half a gallon this year, actually. I need to get some more. Because it is the value version, I tend to find it shrinks a lot more. So it doesn't give as much depth, physical, actual layer on my painting as I would like, so I have to put a lot of layers on. And that's because there's a lot of water in it. If it had more actual acrylic polymer, it probably wouldn't shrink quite as much and it would keep more of its shape. But for the price I pay, I will put three layers on instead of shelling out for the other stuff right now. May not be the case later on once I really hone that technique I want. And the thinner layers are drying faster. Just this past art fair, I was moving a painting, setting it up that I'd put a really thick layer of the gel on top of to, you know, deepen the colors and all that, and it still had white bits in it because it hadn't dried all the way through. So thinner layers can be more helpful, although I think you'll get better texture if you do one big one and I let it dry. I can actually put it in my oven because acrylics aren't really going to explode on you. They're, they're not prone to flames like oil paint is. So I'll dry it that way. So just a few tips and tricks on acrylic painting in particular and why I'm using really thick stuff in the paints I use and a bit of my palette. You'll see me add color and color and color to this big guy. I will use my brush a little bit as I'm trying to control the edges of where your eyes go and while I want to work on more paintings that are completely planned on where the edges are, the colors, and the... I didn't do a value for this. A value of study, that's what I'm working off of in the corner right there. This one kind of guided itself. It told me what it wanted to be as I went of what color fits here. Let's try this one. Nope, layer it on top of the other one. So it has one of the least amounts of guidance that I've done in a painting, especially of one this big, and I'm kind of proud of that. It's more risky to do that for me, and yet I think it's working very well, and it's got a nice energy and texture to it. So to see a shot of what I've finished of the painting, I've finished it by the time I'm recording this. If you like this, please like and subscribe, you know, the usual, and give me your thoughts below on... Do you have any tips for acrylic painting, what kind of palettes you use, or even brand? Thanks guys! Bye!